the House has resumed. Members, the House is considering the third reading of the Prisoners and Victims Claims Continuation and Reform Amendment Bill. When the House rose for dinner, David Clendon has the call. He has four minutes remaining. Should he wish to avail himself of that? David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Yes, I'm pleased to take the opportunity to um, make some further comments about this unfortunate piece of legislation that has been inflicted on the House. It would be a defensible piece of legislation, perhaps, to, to continue to embed as a permanent feature rather than a temporary one, which is how it was designed and enacted. If we had any evidence that in the ensuing eight years that it had done any good, and as I mentioned earlier, it clearly has not done a great deal of good. A total sum of $45,000 has been dispersed to victims as a result of this piece of legislation, despite the significant cost to the country of enacting both the process cost, the cost of the various um, stopgap pieces of legislation, the continuance and now this one, all for a grand sum of $45,000 to victims. Our as I said earlier, our original support, our somewhat tentative support, but support nonetheless, for the 2005 legislation was predicated on the expectation that a comprehensive review of victims' rights would be undertaken. We do have an issue in New Zealand with... Um, we have a very disjointed, not a very um, strategic or well-considered approach to making restitution to victims. We have some good programs in place. We have some good processes, restorative justice processes, albeit not as much as we could use those very positive um, means of getting good, fair outcomes that are transparent and that serve the needs of victims and make offenders think and hopefully deter them from reoffending. But unfortunately, we have never seen the review, the, the significant review, a sort of a clean slate approach to how can we make good, um, how can we ensure that the victims of crime get restitution as appropriate, that they get the appropriate treatment, counselling. There are means to not undo an offence that's been done to a person, but certainly to help them recover from it. And we're not even at page one of thinking through what that might look like, and that's a piece of work that I suspect will require, as Mr Little indicated earlier, an approach from a new government, a government with a more progressive set of ideas, a government not frightened to take the step back and undertake that difficult piece of work of a comprehensive review, rather than these add-on, stopgap, a sort of um, short-term measures which really do us no good and indeed are now doing us harm. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Alfred Naro. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise and take a call in the third reading of the...